The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to the Ben Heck Show Holiday Workshop. Today we're going to finalize a present to put under the tree, the Xbox One Portable. Let's get started. Amazing builds, exclusive mods, cutting edge ideas, electronics, engineering, and more. Every week on Element 14's The Ben Heck Show. In our previous episode, we got the Xbox One working, but we realized that the Blu-ray drive would not work at an angle, which is not good because this whole project is meant to work at an angle. So we have to figure out a workaround. Uh, I'm gonna just do a double blind here and run the Blu-ray drive you know, flat like it's supposed to be, make sure it's working, make sure it's not some other issue, and then we'll try to figure out a solution. You know, we don't really need the optical drive. I mean, we'll, we'll also test to see if the system will boot without the optical drive, because if that's the case, we could just admit it. I mean, you can download every game now off the internet. You don't even need optical media. And really, there shouldn't be optical media. Yeah, I said it. Optical media is dead. Okay, it says insert disc. Inserting disc. This will tell us if the disc is working or not. Yep, there it is. Okay, so our issue is the Blu-ray drive does not work unless it's flat. It does not work at an angle. Uh, that's too bad. I kind of thought it would because, you know, it sucks the Blu-ray in. Maybe, gosh, I'm not sure. I mean, it wouldn't spin if the spindle didn't engage. I guess we could take apart the Blu-ray drive and see what's inside of it. Let's see what happens without the Blu-ray drive. I think it will still boot if I had to guess. Oh, there it is. Maybe it won't work without the Blu-ray. Oh, there it is. All right. Insert disc. Haha, <laughs> you don't even have a disc. What are you gonna do now? <laughs> I inserted the disc, but it didn't work. Help me, tech support. <laughs> the controller, the wi wireless controllers work differently than they did previously. They use, um, I think it's a Wi-Fi stack. So basically it's a Wi-Fi connection, not a 2.4 gigahertz connection. So I think the fact that I don't have all the antennas hooked back up to this is affecting it negatively. That's why we're getting this intermittent controller action. It appears like it doesn't care if it has a Blu-ray drive or not. Okay, so as a backup, we could do it without the Blu-ray drive, but I'm at least gonna try to get the Blu-ray drive to work at an angle. The Blu-ray drive appears to be built into the case, so I've gotta be careful not to mess it up, because then we will have no choice but to omit it. The power of a game in the palm of my hand. This uh, black roller is what actually sucks in the disc. Although the other question is what aligns the disc. You know what might actually help is to, uh, uh oh, it's stuck. is to try to run it again, but leave the back of it off so we can see what is happening or rather what isn't happening. Because when the disc comes in here and engages, this probably moves and locks the spindle in place and then just starts spinning. So that is probably what's not happening. Like it's not fully engaging, but I want to figure out why. And then this appears to move over as the disc loads and then it looks like it hits this switch which probably means disc loaded, I guess. With the back off, hopefully we can see what's going on or not going on when we try to insert a disc at an angle. Let's make sure the system is booted and then we'll stick the disc in and see what happens. Yeah, the disc isn't spinning. Well, that's a, a clue, I guess. Let me try putting it in a slightly different angle. There it goes. 
What's the message? Oh, Assassin's Creed started? All right. I'm gonna bounce out of this. I'm gonna tilt the disk drive at 15 degrees, which is where it'll actually be in the unit, and see if it works like that. All right, we're testing at 15 degrees. No dice. Okay, I'm gonna somehow reach the eject button and try that again. Okay, I think that the trick is to insert a little higher than you need to go. So instead of inserting it straight in, you kind of insert it at the top and roll it in, if that makes sense, because now it's working. So I think what we can do to kind of encourage that is maybe have a little bit less of a gap here and more of a gap here to encourage the disc to be pushed in that way. So I think we can work with that. I have a spacer on the back of the, what I'll call ring of light connector. And that's just so it can't touch the uh, heat sink, which is probably connected to ground. I want to make sure it's isolated just in case. So that's gonna be right about there. Then I routed this special tray for the Blu-ray drive. It has spacers on the back of it. And I've taken all the measurements to make sure it fits. So what happens is this will sit here and those spacers will touch the motherboard so everything is at the right height. And there's two screws here that will mate up with the earlier parts of the case. And then I have another spacer cooling on the 3D printer right now. The idea is you can take your Blu-ray drive and we'll attach it to this, probably a little bit of double-sided adhesive, but see how it fits in there really nice. And we'll have a spacer there as well. And then you can take your Blu-ray drive, set it in place, and then screw it into the case. So you must be able to take everything apart. That is always my golden rule. All right, this looks pretty good. We'll still have to move these cables over, but it's looking promising. And then when the case is all together, the back of the case will push against the Blu-ray drive, locking it in place completely. I've attached the 3D printed spacer. So this should sit nice and flat. Yep. So these will connect to the case. This sits nice and flush against the motherboard. There's a slight gap here for a piece of laser cut panel to actually have the slit in it for the discs. House of cards. House of Thrones cards. House of Thrones mashup. All right, let's jump on YouTube and get that done. Grumpy Cat's gotta be in there somehow. Now it's time for a tech timeout. A few episodes ago, I showed you how I restored an Atari landfill cartridge. I got the PCB working, but the plastic cartridge itself still needed some love. So the games were steamrolled back in the day, crushed smaller, so the cartridges aren't all intact. The trick was to bend and heat the cartridge enough that it was formed into enough of a square to fit into a real Atari. I don't want to completely fix it because I still want it to be the original cartridge. It should look damaged, but it should work. <laughs> so it now fits in and you can actually play the game using the original full cartridge. It's been fully restored. I'm gonna add a few laser cut plates. This one is for the Blu-ray. And this one is for the back panel, with the USB port, IR, and ethernet. I'm covering up the connect port, because why? I'm printing another bracer to put in here just to add support. So I'm doing this one bit at a time because it's always good to have the actual real parts in your hands and that helps you figure out how to design the next part. Uh, if you design too much stuff at once, uh, none of it might work and you have to start over. So I like to do it one thing at a time. I know I've said that a million times, but I always just keep mentioning it on the show just because. I'm gluing the plate to the connectors themselves. So if we need to take the motherboard out, the plate will come with the motherboard. And a little hot glue won't hurt. <laughs> I feel like I've been vindicated over the years. The more years go by, the more electronics are just glued together. So my hot glue usage seems less and less weird every year. 
obviously planned it that way. I 3D printed these spacers just to give the plate a little bit more to grab onto. So I'm gonna glue the plate to the Blu-ray frame again. So if you remove the Blu-ray and the frame, the plate comes with it. So the plate's not actually attached to the case. Time for the next layer. This bottom piece here, I haven't uh, put it on the bandsaw and cut an angle at it yet, but I will. All right, that's gonna go right there. Then this goes here and it's gonna slightly cover the HDMI, which is okay. I still have to hot glue the HDMI. Since it works, I wanna, you know, secure it. And then this piece goes over the power plug and mates there. So this is where, if you can see that that's where I have to put the curve still. And then this little block goes here. Looks like everything lines up pretty good. Uh, yeah, pretty good. I think I might need to make a little adjustment. One thing I like about Sintra is if you do have to adjust something, uh, you can carve it with a knife without too much effort. So if I need a little bit more clearance here, I can just carve a piece out. Now that I have the 15 degree cut made in this latest piece, I can attach it to the previous layers. The layers in this are gonna come apart in two halves. The two bottom layers will stay intact and then when you wanna take this unit apart, you'll remove these layers. So these screws will be some of the exposed screws that allow you to take the unit apart. Since, you know, we have this curve at the bottom, well, it's not a curve, it's an, an angle at the bottom. Uh, I have to build this, you know, in a certain way. It's a little bit more complicated than other laptops have done in the past. I have to build it in a certain way to make sure it can still be taken apart. So that's why I have these inset screws. See how they're uh, countersunk, so to speak? That way they're still accessible in the curve. Uh, yeah. These aren't the actual final size screws. These are just to hold it in place. So what I'll do is when I build the subsequent layers, there's two more layers on top of this. Those layers will glue to this layer I've just put down. So those three layers will be one piece. And then when you want to remove it, you remove these screws and these screws and pull those layers off in one piece. So when the units open, it'll look like this and I'm building layers that go on top of it. I'd show you the computer diagram, but it probably wouldn't make much more sense. It'll make more sense when it's done. I promise. And that's the truth. Then you ask me to. Bow, 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 bow. I'm going to mount the hard drive next. The trick was to find the right area to mount it to. I wanted to put it over here, but there really isn't any meat, so to speak, of the case to connect it to. So my thought was to flip it upside down like this, plug in the cable, right? And then I 3D printed this as a case for it. So see how it slides in there? And then this plastic case can fit into a lip right here. See that? And then I can drive these screws so it will be attached in the case just like that. Here is the next layer. Now this one is one solid piece and then it has some cross bracing what I'm gonna do is glue the layer three pieces to the layer four pieces so they form a solid lid. And then when I finish up, and you know, I'll glue layer five to this as well and then we can enclose the whole thing. So yeah, I'm just gonna glue this one corner at a time, line it up as best I can, and then we'll have more of the case done. It's like, like animals, like animals, like. It's like the new stupid song they play every other song on the radio right now. It's so bad, it makes me glad when Taylor Swift comes on. That's how bad it is. This piece here was meant as a brace for when I put it through the bandsaw. Now that it's been through the bandsaw, I can remove it. This is where the Blu-ray goes and where the fish lives. I guess I made a mistake. 
deathbed. The bed that eats. Okay, just one more layer to go that will cover these last pieces. I am now going to embark on a lot of wiring that needs to be done. I do want to touch on one part in particular. That's the SATA connector. The one for the Blu-ray is really short, so we need to extend it. You have to be careful when extending uh, high frequency data lines that you use the same gauge wire as you originally find, otherwise you may lose signal. So if you went from a single solid strand SATA wire to a thicker stranded wire and then back again, it probably won't work. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to cut it. Then I'm going to use another SATA cable to patch up the distance. And then I'm going to make this go into its original spot. So I'm going to keep the ends and extend the middle. Here I go. Took the words right out of my mouth. Inside the SATA cable, there are two twisted pairs, and these are differential signals, just like the HDMI connection. We want to make sure that we keep them straight, so I actually marked where the cable was so we can make sure that we rewire them correctly. See, they don't have color coding. You know, there isn't like white and then green like there would be with USB or HDMI, so we just have to make sure that we keep them straight. And then these are grounds, the little silver wires. Well, they're aluminum, not silver. And I've cut them down right to the surface so I can bend them over at a low angle. So we're gonna go over like that. The new shortened SATA cable is complete. I'm gonna make sure everything is nicely isolated and then use some hot glue to secure it in place. And then my printers will start up. I also need to extend this power wire. It also contains signals like eject and drive open. Uh, this isn't as critical, so I'll just use some standard yellow stranded wire to do it. I continued to add more component mounts into the unit. I actually moved the hard drive back over here because we needed room for the Wi-Fi module. We have the, well, what I call the ring of light unit here. I moved the IR sensor to be a little bit lower so it would have clearance. I put some funky foam on the Blu-ray drive to space it out. I have headers down here. You can't see them from this angle, but that's what will connect to the uh, power button, which will actually go at the top of the unit right there. And I have a hole for my fan. So this part was layers three and four, and then here is layer five. I made it out of black Sintra, so the back of it will be the same color as everything else. And then you can see I actually started putting black vinyl around the edges here, and I will complete it here as well. Uh, I put layers three and four onto the unit, so when I glue layer five to those layers, it will be as lined up as possible. I still need to put a vent back here for the fan, but that's probably the last thing I will actually do. See, so we have our input vent here, so the power supply blower will suck in air and then blow it on the power supply. And here are where the speakers will go. I finished gluing the rear black portion on to the other layers, and I routed a V-groove here so that our kickstand can sit into it. The last things to do are to add the speakers and the fans. Oh, what is this? It is some sort of giant tablet thing. Oh wait, it's an Xbox One. Let's remove the faux leather cover. Ooh, it's got green velvet underneath. I'll flip the cover back like that and put this up into the slot so it stands on end. Let's boot it up. To recap, we took a Samsung LCD screen, we built it into a front panel section along with a flap 
much like a tablet. And then we added the Xbox One components behind it, such as power supply, Blu-ray drive, and fans. So I guess I'm pleased with the outcome. It does work. I think it's too big, but you know, we could only find so small of a screen, so that's what we had to deal with. Things I would have done differently, uh, hopefully found a smaller screen. I wish we would have found a smaller screen, but uh, unfortunately this is the smallest one we could find. But what would you have done differently? How would you have approached an Xbox One style portable? Would you have made a laptop? Or do you think the tablet idea is cool? Let us know on the community. That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, we're going to cover a common community question and discuss the differences between discrete logic, microcontrollers, and things like the Raspberry Pi. We'll see you then. That way we know it's not the Blu-ray and, I guess I already said that. Uh, no wait, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Enough talk, now it's time for action. Now I'll say something goofy on camera. La, 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 la. So you think that's a pretty common Christmas wish? And then I picked up a, a walleye and it was like. <laughs> then I was like. Ugh, uh. <laughs> then I ate it even though I think this is after Christmas. The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com.